Well, clearly, over the course of the year, we've seen this this tapering effect of you know 18% growth in Q1 year over year. Of course, that was the worst COVID impacted quarter that was out there from 2020. Uh, so that was expected around 10% for Q2, and now you know just under 5% for Q3. Um, and, and you know, overall, the outlook for the year remains 8%. So these are these are still some some pretty impressive overall numbers, uh, but I, I I think the difference in what's giving various observers some cause for pause here uh, is the second part of your question, and there are some policy driven aspects of the slowing growth that has left people in the world concerned, um, and 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 we all know what they are. You know, there's the common prosperity. Um, which is a, a little bit of a rethink, and it moves in the direction of greater equality. Okay, so that's one policy directive that is is going to be prioritized ahead of just out and out economic growth. Um, you know, the second one has to do with um, making various adjustments. I'm gonna I'm gonna say um, really as it relates to the environment, uh, and and this being a, a key consideration uh, for many countries in the world. China, no different. But again, that policy goal um, is, is superseding some economic goals. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. I think the, 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 the one that is related to that is power rationing. So, you know, we're seeing power. I mean, the last time we really saw power being adjusted was maybe, I don't know, around the Beijing Olympics in 2008, where just to have, you know, the best possible environment for the world, various changes were made. Um, but now we have rationing is due to shortages of coal. Uh, and also related to that environmental priority. So I think this is why the world isn't just looking at this data and saying, oh yeah, no problem, they're gonna end up at 8%. They're saying, these aren't just sort of economic headwinds that China is going into. They are, they are policy matters that, as it turns out, um, are taking precedence. And as you mentioned, obviously that we have this domestic energy crunch there. You also have though property market concerns and of course the shipping delays, global supply issues as well. And all this on top of a global pandemic. So how surprising is this Q3 data then given this stage of China's economic recovery? Let's talk about the economic issues that you're bringing up here. You know, global supply chains have been interrupted massively, not just in the last quarter, but it, it's been a trend over several quarters. So this is, this is affecting the world and obviously affecting China. Uh, if certain component parts can't get into China to be manufactured or assembled or even for consumers to purchase them, you know, that's going to have a negative effect on the economy. Um, so that's, that's something that, I mean, the whole world is sitting up and taking notice and wondering, you know, when are we going to shake this off? Uh, is it systemic and is it, is it not going away uh, anytime soon? Um, the adjustment to the property market. I, I mean, you know, the average urban Chinese resident has almost three quarters of their net worth tied up in the value of their home. It's a very important part of their wealth. And, and I think China's saying, you know, that's awesome and that's great, but we don't want proper to be, property to be a tool for speculation. We want it, you know, property is a place where you should live, you know, not you should have 10 condos or apartments and, and, and try to become, you know, a billionaire. So, that's going to be adjusted accordingly. And again, it's related a little bit more to the, the, the equality and the, and the common prosperity. So I think those are some more economic themes um, that we're seeing that, you know, uh, infrastructure, construction, massive part. I, you know, it's, it, it's almost half of GDP growth normally in a, in a, in a normal quarter. So um, you're going to see some adjustments there. So as you look at some of the challenges, but also looking at some of China's biggest economic growth drivers, what do you think it's going to take then to turn China's economy around at this point? Well, I think part of it is the rest of the world cooperating with this global supply chain. You know, I look out the window of my office and I see all these uh, container ships that are found their way down into Southern California. Normally they're concentrated at the ports of, of Long Beach and Los Angeles, but they're everywhere. So, I mean, this is a big problem. Right. And uh, and the cost of shipping has gone up, you know, astronomically. Um, so I think we've got to see some relief in, in that area because China has exports and they're important. Uh, and China is, is, is increasingly importing goods. I mean, you saw, I think today, based on those GDP numbers, several of the luxury goods manufacturers out of Europe were down, you know, 
two to five percent their share prices because you know there's this idea that the economy is correcting and it, and it may be tougher to get um, that stuff moved around the world. Um, so we've got to see some relief from the global supply chain, logistics, transportation. These are impacting China, but they're not limited to China. You know, the rest of the world um, has a say in this. Uh, and then I think ultimately on the policy issues, some hard decisions have to be made. 